Hi there, thanks very much for joining me. Today I'm working on the last of my 8 inch square canvases. This canvas board, as you can see it's an Arteza board and I'm going to do another abstract on this. So I'm starting off with a dark green micron permanent marker pen. It's a very fine point and I want to sort of create a little bit of a horizon. Um, just a random shape. I don't like those funny little things there that I've done so I'm actually going to extend that and use that to make another line going up and just to create a little bit of interest. Let's just split that quite nicely into random quarters. So now I'm going to use a thicker black sharpie pen and I'm just going to add a few more heavier lines just going over that one there and we'll just extend it up to this little point here so we've got a nice balance there. An excellent way to test if your permanent marker has dried, just a little drop of water on the end of your finger and just rub it on the line and test it. Now we've come back and this is fully dry. So I'm just going to go in wet a little area under here, just with clean tap water and this soft flat brush. And I'm going to use this beautiful blue ink. This is the acrylic inks. This is the Dale of Rowney blue. And I will put all the colours in the description for you. And I'm just obviously dropping it in and letting it run into that area that I've just wet. So it's doing its thing quite naturally there. It's a, a really beautiful blue. I don't often use a bright blue, but for this picture, I want it to be sort of spring colours. And I associate this blue with spring. So I'm going to pull that out a little bit just with a, a clean damp brush you can wash it out a little, little bit more water and just pull that down I've kind of kept it within that first green fine line that we did and now I've wet the other side there is a little bit of a patch there that you can see that actually has some white paint I'd found a little mark there so I went over it and I'm just going to add the same blue so we've got a good balance a sort of diametrically opposite balance and now just using a very small palette knife I'm pulling some of that ink out and I'm adding a little bit of titanium white we can blend it onto the canvas no problem at all I'm going to use a slightly larger knife just to blend it a little bit better I'm always tempted to use a small one where I actually should use a bigger one there we go I'm taking that colour up into that wet ink Makes some really interesting effects. It almost looks like it's been wind blown. I really like that. And I'm just softening that down. And now I'm adding in a really soft metallic, almost like a primrose yellow gold. It's really, really pretty. It almost doesn't show very much. And now, as you can see, using the um, spatula, the silicon spatula, just add a little bit more. It really is such a delicate spring yellow, it's beautiful. Pulling it out with the point, we can stretch it around, blend it into different areas, mix it with that blue and it's going to create a beautiful soft green as well. A little bit too fiddly to get into there with that, so I'm just using a flat brush just to blend those colours together. And that works really pretty. Again, minimal colours, but blended together will give you a beautiful range of beautiful tones that all work together. So filling in a little bit more with titanium white, just blending that in. And here's that yellow, really pretty. And here I'm using um, a, a pipette, a plastic pipette, which you'd normally use for inks. And this is a little bit thicker, um, so it's actually staying in place. And now using the round-ended palette knife, just to spread it, it looks like butter and it's really beautiful. We can spread that out because it's slightly thicker than the ink, it's actually staying in shape. Don't be afraid to move your canvas around. You can always move your canvas to make life easy for yourself. And now using that spatula, I'm going to actually scrape out quite a lot of that that we've just put in, which sounds ridiculous, but that's okay because what we can do is move it to somewhere else. We've already got then tonal colours that are matching in different areas. Just sweeping that down very gently using the side of the spatula. And we'll take out that little bit more. 
and add it in. So if there's a colour you don't want or you, you want to duplicate, that's a great way to do it. Now I'm going to bring that blue across that little bit there. I want that to sort of connect. And it's quite wet, so I'm going to tilt it and see what happens. And what it should do is run along the line of that slightly thicker paint, which it is doing. Now you can see I've let it run to the end. And now I'm softening some of this area up here with a little bit of just titanium white. The ink is still wet, so I'm still blending it in. And a little bit down there. Add it where you want, where you want paler colours. Obviously you can blend the paint, mix it with your palette knife and the colours, and you'll end up with some beautiful shades. Now I'm actually going in with a cad yellow paint, just to give that extra bit of boost. It's a beautiful colour and it works so well with the primrose. Really lovely, just sweeping it down into that white paint. And I'm going to take it along that top a little bit. Yeah, blend that in with that lovely primrose yellow. The primrose yellow is pearlescent, so although you can't actually see that at this point, when I show you later on, you actually see it shimmers. It's really soft, it's beautiful. And we're going to mix that white in with that yellow, really soften it down, and also soften this blue area as well. Remember, you can always go back in and add more colour if you want to. That's softening that down really nicely. And again, I'm going to use the round ended spatula. It probably has a proper name, but I'm not aware of what it is. Um, but it really smooths out paint and ink very nicely together. And back with this small spatula, the small palette knife, I'm actually using some Winsor & Newton Galleria Pale Olive. It's so similar to the colour that we mixed with the primrose yellow and the turquoise and it's just that little bit deeper. And again, just blending it with a mixture of white just to get the tones that I want. And again, using that beautiful blunt end just to soften. It flattens down a lot of uh, bumps as well. And now I'm going to bring that blue across there. This is lovely blue. And that just adds that little bit of interest across that side as well. And I'm spraying that with just clean water and then just pulling that. No paint on there till now. Now I'm going to sweep that across. We're losing some of that initial green line, but I'm not too worried. I can add that back in later. And now it's just a question of blending, smoothing, grazing the paint to get the effects that we want. I'm going to take that out. That just got a little bit carried away. And the paint underneath was dry, so it just lifted straight off. And just going to take that across there. Lovely. And now let's put a little bit more of that pale olive green across here. Very pretty colour. And I put a little bit of that lovely cad yellow and I'm across this side as well, just to maintain that nice balance that we've got with all those colours. OK, so this is a bit of a difficult angle to work at, so let's turn the board around, make life easy for ourselves, and add some of that beautiful cadmium yellow deep hue again. It really is spring colours. The blues, the yellows, and the mixture that makes the green. And just softening that, that blue edge a little bit. So just using that small palette knife, gets into those little areas really well. The ink is still slightly wet, so it's blending with that white paint and softening that, that line up beautifully. There we go. Ooh, that's nice. Pull some of that colour down. Pretty. We've got some organic shapes forming as well. Because we put those initial lines of horizon in and we've worked to those, because they're not straight, we're getting those lovely organic shapes. I'm just going to take that out a little bit with a, a tissue, paper towel, just soften that up. And just soften that area of the olive with some white. Blending those colours, just making them really work together. So here you can see I'm just applying a little bit of the ink uh, just at the end of that palette knife. Just want a tiny bit there that I can pull out into that colour rather than putting it onto the canvas board itself. And we can sweep that out along those lovely organic lines. It Re really highlights the, the greens and the yellows with the blue underneath it. 
So in some of these areas, I've actually just gone back in and added a little bit more depth to the lines that we originally drew. A lot of them have got lost and I'm actually now going to use some of the ink and add a little bit more colour beneath them and between them just to give a bit more solid colour in some areas and bring the colour down. It's great to do this with a fine brush. Um, because the ink is so versatile, you can use a brush really easily with it. It just puts those little bits of definition back in. I know it's only a slight amount, but it just really does, you can see there, really defines the shape of that gold area. And I'm still using the blue, so even if it mixes, it'll make a sort of pretty green colour that goes with the colour we've already got. Now using this very, very small palette knife again, and just pop a little bit of white in there. It's really come together now. The lines are back in place. We have a lot more definition in some of those areas. And even though it's an abstract, it flows. We've got a lovely movement there. So some of the areas that I've actually gone back into are this blue area here with the white. We've got some marvelous, almost like marbled effects. And it just is something interesting to look at. Now you can see as I put it in the frame, you can actually pick up on that beautiful pearlescent sort of primrose yellow colour, the Robeson paint. And you can see exactly what I meant about it, just catching the light and just adding that extra shimmer and shine. So I really hope that you've enjoyed this and I hope that you'll give that a try. Do please um, let me know how you get on. I'd be very interested. And if you have any questions, do get in touch. Keep painting and I will very much look forward to seeing you for another project very soon. Many thanks for watching. Bye for now.